All right, first review of 2023. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back. I just said that. Sorry, I screwed up. Let me start over. Welcome back to Potty Plan Entertainment. My name is Chris, and in case you don't know, I review movies, and I rank them on a scale of 0 to 100 in increments of 5. Guys, as I said, first review of 2023. It's for a 2022 movie. Now, here's the thing. I got three more movies from 2022 that I want to review. The Whale, which we're doing today. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. And Glass Onion. Uh, my review for Pinocchio should be coming this week. My review for Glass Onion will probably be coming next week. Um, I haven't seen Glass Onion yet, but I am going to be watching it this week. I already finished Pinocchio, so I'll be getting started on my notes for that soon. And then uh, once I finish all that, we'll do our best of 2022 list. And then I will be reviewing The Pale Blue Eye. Uh, still working on my notes for that one as well. Um, the Whale. So this movie is based on a play. Um, and when you watch the movie, it's kind of obvious. Because it all takes place in one location. Um, but I think the transition from the stage to the screen. What Darren Aronofsky was able to do with this is quite impressive so let's get into it so the whale stars brendan fraser hong chow sadie singh ty simpkins and samantha morton and it was directed by dare Dar dan aronofsky sorry <laughs> and this movie tells a story of a man who teaches english online who is trying to reconnect with his estranged daughter after he left their family for his lover um this movie, this was one that I was very much looking forward to. And it, it's just because of, like, work, I guess. It, it took me up until the night before I could go see it. But I went to go see it tonight, and I was impressed. This, this is why I love movies. This was a fantastic film. It is definitely going to be on my best of the year list. Let's get into it. So the first thing I love about The Whale is Brendan Fraser. This is what everybody's going to this movie for. This is the talking point of the film is Brendan Fraser's performance. This is his comeback. This is his real, real comeback. He's been kind of estranged from Hollywood for a while now. And now he's back and he's punching us all in the face with an amazing performance. He... He's given Austin Butler a serious run for his money with this because this is acting. He was so good in this movie. He completely disappears into this role and it is just phenomenal. Everybody in this movie does a really good job. Hong Chow, who was also in the menu this year, she, I think, is in the contest for best actress in a supporting role. She was really, really good in this as well. Sadie Sink was fantastic as Brendan Fraser's daughter. Ty Simpkins was really good. And Samantha Morton, even though she only had one scene, she was fantastic as well. You were going to go to this movie for these performances. Everybody brings their A game, and it is just a sight to behold. Brendan Fraser is absolutely fantastic in this film. If he doesn't win the Oscar and Austin Butler does, I understand that. But at the same time, I feel like it belongs to Brendan Fraser. I, I think this is him. This is He deserves this award. He already won Best Actor, I believe, at the Critics' Choice Awards. I think he deserves the Oscar for Best Actor of 2022. I just I think he, he takes the cake on this one. Um, but if Austin Butler won as well, I wouldn't be mad. But I think this, is, this goes to him. Uh, the, this movie really, really makes you feel... For Charlie, he plays a man named Charlie. He's a deep, emotional person with a way who also has a way with words, because he he's a writer. He's an English teacher, and he tries his best to stay positive and have a positive outlook on the world. And someone like that, you can't really not feel for them. Um, and he he takes that material. And he's, he, you just, it's gut-wrenching because you care for him so much and what he's gone through and what he's going through because he's dying because of his weight. It, it, it's just, it's heartbreaking. This is a very heartbreaking film. There were times where I almost cried. 
I, it's just, it's amazing. It, th- Brendan Fraser, I cannot speak highly enough of his performance. He is fantastic in this film. This movie also should get nominated for Best Makeup. The prosthetics on Fraser are fantastic. You see him in this fat suit, like, without a shirt on, and you you would think it's real. It, it's really, really believable. Uh, Brendan Fraser's character is so morbidly obese, and he eats a lot. And Hong Chao's character, who is his nurse, she is sent, she's taking care of him, but she's also enabling him. And when you watch him eat, it's really gross. But I think that was the point. Um, it, it's and they talk about in this movie, movie like how he's a gross person. And they really back that up with him eating. There's one scene where he gets so low, he just goes on this binge eating spree. And it's really gross. It reminded me of like mukbangs that you watch on YouTube. It's pretty gross and it makes you uncomfortable, but in a good way. Like it's it serves a purpose. It's not just there for show or to be insensitive toward morbidly obese people. It serves a purpose. Um, and this movie also presents what I thought was a plot hole involving money. And it turns it into something big that I wasn't expecting. And that's my next pro for this movie, which this movie actually has a lot of twist in it. Like, there there was a lot of stuff where you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. The plot thickens. And it's just amazing. Now, I, I've heard that this, like, they really didn't change anything from the play. Like, the only credited writer for this movie is the guy who wrote the play. So I don't know if he took his script and changed some things up or what. I don't know. If you know anything, let me know in the comments. But let's see. Um, There's a lot of twists in this movie. And there's just things you wouldn't expect. And it's all, it's really, really heartbreaking. Um, This also should be in the contest for best A24 movie. I mean, seriously, like, Uncut Gems was fantastic. But if we're going to talk about the best A24 movie... I think it should be The Whale. It should definitely at least be in that discussion. This is why I love movies. When you can watch a film where you walk out of the theater feeling different, feeling good, feeling emotional, maybe even nostalgic, they did something right. And this movie definitely does that. And this is why I love movies. My only real con with it is that the last few seconds, I do mean like the like the last like eight seconds of this film was a bit off-putting. I was like, what just happened? I don't really know what happened. I guess it's open to interpretation. Uh, but literally the last few seconds of this film, I was, I was kind of taken back by it a little bit. I wasn't really sure what it was supposed to mean. Um, but this is a fantastic film. I love The Whale. If you haven't already, go support it. Real filmmaking deserves your support. I mean, sure, Marvel's great and all, but this deserves to be successful at the box office. This. So, with all that being said, I'm going to give The Whale a 95. We'll be back soon. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to Potty Planet for more. Hit the like button. Leave me review suggestions down in the comments down below. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Potty Planet Entertainment for channel updates and bonus content. And much love.